Hello and welcome back to another Mog Station update video, or I should still say a Final Fantasy XIV online store. Uh, two new items, or essentially, well, three new items if you count the fact that that uh, attire is actually a double pack, uh, made its way to the online store today of the 30th of June 2022. We're going to have a look at those in just a second in individual segments. There'll be timestamps obviously in the chapter section and the pinned comment in the comment section. So if you feel the video is a little bit too long and you just want to get to what you're wanting to see, then you can do straight away. First of all then let's cover the prices. So we're first of all in Great British Pounds. We've got £13.80 from Mamashiba uh, sorry, the Mega Sheba mount, which is account wide. Uh, as you can see here, as they've got a little preview window, it's uh, it looks pretty good in action, running across from the distance. There, it's got little legs, and um, I'm presuming this one scales with the size of your character. We'll have to have a look in the game, but as you can see, you can see it on a Lalafell here, he's a happy little chappy. He looks happy to run around, and I cannot wait to actually have a look at this one. You'll notice that there is actually a button, uh, an action button is, uh, it itself, uh, to actually trigger him to, well, what appears to be bark, right? Uh, there appears to be three buttons. So one of them is like happy, one of them is like a contented face, and then one of them is a sad face, sad puppy. So those will have animations associated with them. Personally, straight off the bat, my first impression, £13.80 for an account-wide mount that has three actions. Brilliant. Actually one of the best things uh, that I've seen in a while. The other item then, uh, the street attire, you actually get more than one costume. You get both of these. So as you can see, it says includes street cap, street jacket, street top, street handwear, cargo trousers and uh, cargo trousers and high top shoes. So the only difference between the two outfits in the first place is obviously the more feminine outfit has the uh, stomach section open and the masculine one does not and has a different kind of jacket but instead of gender locking these outfits behind a paywall instead they've made it so that you can wear pretty much anything you want out of this uh, set and you get it for 15 pounds that's not too bad we'll see what it dies like there is a little bit of a die preview here obviously we do better in the game but yes so those are the base prices in great british pounds in japanese yen then that's 2530 yen for the amount 2420 for the outfit so you'll see in a lot of these currencies you're getting a much better deal with the amount than you are the glamour set although this technically would count as like two glamour sets so 24 us dollars or 22 us dollars for the street attire and of course in european uh currency we've got 16 euros 80 cents or 17 euros 50 for the outfit overall i don't think this is too bad a lot of criticism will come from the actual attire itself as to why they didn't separate these into two separate attires and sell them cheaper but honestly i don't think this price is really indicative of um you know being a bad thing in terms of what we've had in the past so a lot of costume sets you'll notice are gender locked and uh, you know you get much less value you're going to be hard pressed to make 15 pounds with something like this for example they could have done it this way with the collagiate attire so the masculine version and the feminine version are locked behind uh, two separate prices there of £11.16. So you can imagine that there's at least 22, nearly £23 worth of attire just in this. You could argue that. Most people would argue against it. Anyway, that's it for the price segment. What you might be looking for, the link will be in the description. Let's move on to the in-game previews of both things. All right, first port of call is to look at the actual mount itself. So let's read through its text very quickly. It says, Summon forth your Mega Sheba mount. Fluffy, living proof that massive can still be adorable. It says, Sold as a Mama Sheba, a non-existent miniature Far Eastern dog, this creature continued to grow until it was larger than a man. But despite its prodigious size, it has somehow retained its cuteness, which it combines with the practicality of being rideable. The hidden text then says, 
He's so fluffy. A quote there of Tamarita. To Mari no Marita? To Marita. I don't know whom, whom that is, but clearly they are a Makote. So it also has two action buttons. It's got bark and wag. Both are on a three second recast time. Obviously, they're not battle related things. This game doesn't have pay to win mounts. And this is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get enough of that. <laughs> Fantastic. And our free actions are Bark, Wag, and Whimper. It didn't show Whimper on the actual mount guide for some reason, but there are actually three buttons. Uh, so Bark is... Oh. Oh, there's slightly different tones of Bark. The Wag button... Makes you jump around and his tail sort of wobbles. <laughs> and whimper. Oh. Oh, I feel really bad. And you pet him bad every he's like, oh no. The loot didn't drop this time. You know, pet pet. <laughs> oh dear so i thought it'd be a good idea to come inside of uh, bottoms metal in explorer mode simply because it's daytime here and i'm having a lot of trouble trying to record videos when it's uh in the game because it's just like permanently nighttime for some reason so uh oh no it's gonna loop that if i go into it i was gonna do like my g pose panning i've got to unmount and remount but as you can see, this guy is a fluffy, adorable Mamashiba, uh, just a, a very big one. Ever since we got the minion back in Stormblood, I've been looking forward to one day being able to get a big fluffy version. I never thought it would be possible, but after we saw this originally unveiled, I could not be happier. One thing I will notice, though, with my character's tail here, it does seem a little bit, well sort of broken and to the side i'm not sure if my character's tail is supposed to stick out like that it does kind of look like i'm signaling to turn right um that might be just a makote thing it doesn't look very comfortable does it apart from that you know if you don't have a tail on your character you're gonna have a great time uh it's yeah that's that is slightly weird isn't it i do like the little beads around his foot there and his little neckerchief Fantastic. Yeah, the tail is really, 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 really noticeable, isn't it? <laughs> I'm afraid that's the Palace of the Dead theme. So, we can chalk that one down to, I mean, not traditionally generic music, but the modern day equivalent of what they do when they don't want to create something specific. So what music would I have chosen, if anything? Probably something, I don't know, upbeat maybe something to do with Stormblood, like some Far Eastern sort of meme based music. But yeah, it looks pretty awesome. But why would you have one Mamashiba when you can also join with other Mamashibas? They look much better as a pack. <laughs> as Fran, I love that. That was the perfect angle, Fran just riding on, on the back of the dog in the distance. <laughs> oh, I'm, t I'm too easily impressed. I really am. But yeah, it's not just my tail then. Okay. <laughs> and of course, a good mount wouldn't be a good mount without scaling. Look, <laughs> so I used the Fantasia, basically kept most of the settings the same to make uh, Mione a Lalafell. And as you can see, uh, the size difference is quite amazing, isn't it? Mine actually looks like a normal Mamashiba dog to the size of the Rothgar, a Franz alt here. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, friends, Rothgar here, that thing is huge. That could, that could eat this Lalafell alive. All right, then, costume time. As you can see, we're over here in uh, Dora Ilo in Viazim Step, my favorite place in the game, uh, majoritively because the daytimes are usually almost certainly without rain. I say that, but it's probably going to jinx that. Um, but as you can see, this is the outfit. Let me just do a quick sit, otherwise we'll be smiling and waving on the actual uh, pan around. Let's go into G-Pose and we'll have a look. But as you can see, it is a fairly snazzy looking outfit. This streetwear van is obviously, you know, 
uh, originally, I believe, on the Korean version. So a lot of the influences from Korean sort of street style are present within this, along with a lot of other influences as well. The cap, obviously, we've got the brim on the back of the cap and uh, we've got the strap on the front. The detail on this outfit is actually kind of shockingly good. Um, we're just mostly looking at the hat here. I've taken off all of the other pieces of gear. So I've taken off bracelets and rings and stuff in case those clash and earrings. But as you can see on the brim of the cap, which is obviously reversed because it's cool. We've got like that star on it. The, the studded star. We've got two hoops. And we also have um, this sort of like bandana inside. So you're wearing a bandana, which is really beautiful, by the way. I would love that as a separate item. And then a hat on top of it. The jacket itself has um, Moogle and Chocobo, as if Moogle and Chocobo were a K-pop sort of stars or something in a street scene. I can imagine, probably rappers. Uh, this then is the feminine top. We'll look at the masculine top in just a second. I don't know what else to really call those, but uh, they are gender unlocked. So even as a male character, you will be able to wear this as well. I do like that actually on the back. And I think my girlfriend said that if they sold this in real life, she would give them her money. The only problem is if it was on the Square Enix merchandise store, I have no idea how much that would cost, especially the shipping. On the front of this then, uh, as you can see on the feminine one, we have a, um, you know, a sports top underneath the actual jacket that says Chocobo. And there's a little metal Chocobo as a necklace there, well, like a double necklace. The other things then, uh, so the hat is like for both sets. Uh, the, the gloves, the legs, and the feet are all for both sets. The only difference between the two sets then that you get is the jacket. So that's the only other thing. Uh, the gloves then are actually really awesome. The hands, I should say. So we've got black nail polish. Uh, so much like the false nails glamour item, but comes with gloves, which is really nice. Uh, we've got a studded glove on one side, uh, fingerless, obviously. And on the other side, we don't have a glove, but we have two bracelets which uh, if we get nice and close using the GPO's uh, zoom in features, you'll notice that one of them has this symbol on it, like a square symbol, and the other has a chocobo. Uh, I've also noticed the chocobo on the legs there, that pixelated one. These rings are also part of the hand item. Obviously, I have, like I said, unequipped all of my right side, so these are actually coming with the glove item in, in particular. It's like what appears to be a D, or is that a C? Is that what does that stand for? It looks like somebody's D and then like a cross or something as a ring. We have the same symbol as the here on this ring, and then a studded uh, sort of like square ring on the side there. It's very cool. I'm amazed how well this is detailed up close uh, without a lot of pixelation. Obviously, the Chocobo logo I think is designed to look like that. The pants, then, uh, as you can see, look pretty good. I do like the zips on the side of them very trendy and i also like the way that they took into boots at the bottom so they're they're not flared by any way they tuck in so whatever boots you wear with this are actually going to probably seamlessly go together the drawstring on the front unfortunately is a 2d image as you can see so it doesn't actually have any like curvature to it so from the side it kind of looks like it's almost invisible or a bit of paper which is one of the things that probably would go against it but that's just the nature of the game they just look like nice baggy pants. I would wear these in real life with an elasticated uh, sort of waist there. Looks really nice. And then finally, the other section is the boots, which most people will be interested in as a separate item. Uh, they look pretty good, actually. They're, they're kind of huge, huge trainers. Uh, we've got a few trainers in the game now. Uh, people said that they would never put, you know, real life looking boots into the game. And then we had stuff right from the start with a veteran reward system. So... Immersion never existed in the first place. Those are really cool boots, though. I can imagine those fitting straight into, like, Final Fantasy VIII's sort of mythos or something. I, I do like the front of those. And they're laceless, because no one no one has time for laces, right, in the future. But this is the other jacket, so let's get nice and close once again. Uh, so this is the masculine-designed jacket. As you can see, we've got more arms. Uh, exposed but we don't have our belly exposed but what we do have on the front here is actually some awesome necklaces that come down below your bust down to your belly button in fact of your character with this red eyed is this a love heart oh, I thought that was a love heart in his eye 
it looked like it from a distance, a red-eyed silver chocobo necklace with another necklace there with the stars. Very cool. I love the detail on this. We've got a clothing tag on the side there, the stitching. We've got uh, zips. Yeah, zips, bangles, and things like that. And on the back, it kind of turns into a bit of a cape. So you've got that sort of length over the bottom as well, down below towards the lower, uh, sorry, upper thigh of the back of your character. We have the same Moogle and Chocobo design on the background, Moogle and Chocobo, the rap duet or K-pop duet. And uh, yeah, I, I think honestly, it's going to, it's going to be difficult for me to choose between the two of them. Although I do like the idea of exposing, um, you know, the, the, the stomach area of my character, mostly because of clipping issues with skirts in the game. So one of the real tests that we'll look at in a moment is if it works with Quain Trolls. That's the big question. So uh, Viera and Rothgar do not have access to the Helms in the slightest. So those of you who play those two particular races, unfortunately, you're out of luck. And uh, yeah, I don't know why we still live in a day and an age where we can't have uh, new outfits designed for everybody. Uh, that's actually accessible in the game, but uh, there we go. If you were wondering, unfortunately, that's the bad news I have for you now. Alrighty then, side by side. So as you can see, I on the right there are wearing the more feminine designed jacket top. And uh, on the left here, we've got Fran's character with the masculine one. So you get all of this included in your, um, your set. I've just noticed one thing though. Interestingly, with that jacket combina combination, the the legs actually change if you can see the drawstring toggle now is gone that's interesting so that 2d thing uh clips away so if you don't like the drawstring it seems that there's a good chance with a lot of tops in the game that that drawstring will actually disappear as well which i think looks a lot better right let's go and have a look at what this fits and doesn't fit with very quickly on the glamour dresser and then we'll look at the die options and then have a summary all right so like i said it's rare for the uh, jackets in this game to work with stuff like quain trails as you can see the feminine jacket works perfectly well uh, well with the quain trails outfit because it doesn't go beyond this waistline we determined quite a while ago that jackets or tops that don't go past this point uh, will actually allow for skirts such as the Quain Trials to work. Uh, in retrospect to that, though, if we were to equip, of course, the more masculine jacket, then we'll probably see a completely different situation, unfortunately. Let's just make sure that that is the case. So we're trying to put the Quain Trials on, and yes. So because the jacket of a masculine one goes beyond this part, uh, a lot of skirts in the game that have a, you know, previous clipping issues, such as the Quain Trails, will disappear and instead just the undergarments will load instead. This is part of the clipping that I was talking about in other videos as well, which also means that uh, some of the long skirts will probably look the best, but you're still going to have a little bit of, of this sort of joining issue. Uh, it looks pretty good, actually, with a variety of other things. Um, I will say, obviously, the female jacket having the ability to wear more uh, stuff like the skirts does make it more favorable for me personally like I'm more likely to make glamours with this setup Than uh, with this top setup than I am anything else simply because I know that there's going to be less of an issue when I come to use some of my favorite glamour pieces such as Quain Trials. For the dyes then as you can see they go through um, pretty good and pretty bad it really depends um, I prefer the female outfit to the male outfit in the die options as well, uh, simply because the chest piece, the underneath of that on the male, uh, seems rather washed out with whatever color you actually apply to it, which is a real shame. Um, I think the female outfit, or at least the feminine styled outfit, definitely has an advantage in that regard. A lot of the dyes do look nice though. You'll notice that one of the things that uh, dyes and uh, surprisingly and things that don't die is the right hand uh, right hand glove they're not dying but the actual fingernails die so much like the false nails which you could originally get from the ananta beast tribe in stormblood uh, they die uh, here as well the fingernails so you can change that black nail polish to something 
that uh, to suit whatever outfit. Of course, what kind of YouTuber looking at dyes would I be if I didn't look at the reverse as well? Obviously, you know, this took a long time to actually record each and every single die shot and put it together on screen for you. So, uh, you know, you're welcome on that one. But yeah, I, I also wanted to feature a reverse view, mostly to see how the lettering would handle the dies. Uh, some, obviously, uh, the dies sort of wash out the lettering completely. You can't see where it says Chocobo as much or Moogle. Uh, the darker colors seem to benefit most from that. Um, but that's not really a massive surprise there because text always suffers from whatever, it, you know, at this sort of scale and resolution anyway with bright colors. So that are going to be less obvious. But you will see the back of your character a lot more than the front of your character. So it is a good idea to at least look at these. But yeah, there are some good die options here, honestly. So overall, how do I feel about uh, the Glamour set? Personally, I think that it's a good move towards having uh, gender unlocked gear. I'm very happy that they didn't add this to the game where only male characters had access to that other jacket. That would be kind of annoying and vice versa. There are a lot of people who play a male, male character who would love to have the feminine equivalent. You know, it is nice to see we're moving in that direction. And honestly, people who complain about the price, really, it is just a jacket change. The outfit is exactly the same. I would prefer this than have two separate outfits being added to the shop and the only difference being a jacket. You know, you would rack up up to, what, £24 or something if you add up how individually priced that would be. So the price point, I think, at, at most... Um, you know, it seems fair for the most part for what it is. Again, it's cosmetic. You don't have to purchase this. It is a lovely item, though, and a set of items. Uh, the Mama Sheba, sorry, the Mega Sheba mount, very good value for money, though. If I was to get only one of these things, the outfit set or the, uh, the mount, I would choose the mount. It is account wide, so usable on any character that you create now or pre-existing or in the future. It has three emotes attached to it, which is very rare for a mount. Usually you only get one action button and the price is pretty average. Honestly, it's, it's about right for an account bound mount. Uh, it doesn't hold multiple seats, but it does have that extra interaction, which is nice. Um, so yeah, that's that's my final thoughts on today's cash shop update. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I put a bit of extra effort in it today. Hopefully you noticed that. If you do notice that, feel free to press the subscribe button. I want to see how many other goals we can reach. And being, you know, being that generic YouTuber, I'm going to tell you to hit the like button as well because more people will see it because of it. I know, I feel filthy saying that. Anyway, much love. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Who are you barking at?